This particular set of notes is going to be about cellular respiration. And when we get to the end of the notes, you will see how the process of cellular respiration is the opposite of the process of photosynthesis. So let's get started. Chemical pathways. Food provides living things what they need to grow and reproduce. Food serves as a source of energy. Now, if you remember, autotrophs get their energy from the sun. Heterotrophs have to consume their energy, which means we get our energy from food. Chemical energy in food. A calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. Now, when we designate calories as a unit of measurement, we use a capital C. So, if you remember from when you did your breakfast cereal lab, you were asked on that particular lab to write down the number of calories, and that would have been a capital C if you were to use the label. Food labels are in what are called kilocalories or 1,000 calories. And there's an example of your food label which you would have looked at when you did the breakfast cereal lab. One of the things that we always say is we're going to burn calories or burn things in order to give us energy. Well, cells don't actually burn glucose. Cells gradually release energy from glucose and other food compounds. And we talked about ADP and ATP in the photosynthesis unit, and we're going to talk about ADP and ATP again in the cellular respiration unit. The process of releasing energy and the first step to cellular respiration is glycolysis. And one way that could possibly help you remember the purpose or the function of glycolysis is we've got glyco here and it has to do with glucose. So once again, glycolysis is the first step of releasing energy. And what we'll be talking about are the three different stages of cellular respiration, just like there were three different stages of photosynthesis. So, what are the stages of cellular respiration? Step number one is glycolysis. Number two is the Krebs cycle and number three is the electron transport chain. Now, if you recall from photosynthesis, there were also three stages to photosynthesis. So it'll be easy to, easy to remember, there are three in photosynthesis, there are three in cellular respiration. You'll just not want to get the two mixed up. So, what is the process of cellular respiration? Cellular respiration is the process that releases energy by breaking down glucose and other food molecules in the presence of oxygen. If you look at the equation down here, you will notice that it is the opposite of photosynthesis. Remember, Photosynthesis was CO2 plus H2O, which gives us C6H12O6 plus O2. So this one is photosynthesis, 
this one, which is the opposite, is cellular respiration. So if you can remember the basic equation, you should know which one is photosynthesis because photosynthesis gives us oxygen as a product and cellular respiration, which is humans, when we exhale, we release carbon dioxide. So, once again, the overall equation for cellular respiration is C6H12O6, and this is glucose, plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide, which is right here, water, plus an electron and 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. Where does cellular respiration take place? Well, it takes place in the mitochondria. So that's where the main part of the energy, meaning the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, take place in the mitochondria. Glycolysis is going to occur outside in the cytoplasm. Now if we remember back when you talked about photosynthesis, photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplasts. So those were the main energy producers in the plant cell and in animal cells it's going to be the mitochondria. Plant cells also have mitochondria and undergo cellular respiration. There's our friend Sadie joining in on the conversation again. All right, so let's review the structure of a mitochondria. It has a very smooth outer layer. It has a folded inner membrane and the reason for the folds is to increase surface area. These folds are called Christi and the space inside the Christi is called the matrix. I think she's done. Nope, she's not. So let's look at a diagram of this process. Remember glycolysis? is the breaking down of glucose and this takes place in the cytoplasm and from glycolysis we end up with ATP the next part of cellular respiration is the Krebs cycle the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix and that was the space that was inside the Christi. And finally, the last stage of cellular respiration is the electron transport chain and that occurs across the Christi. So it goes back and forth across 
those folds. Now, just by looking at the picture, you could probably see how challenging this particular process or how difficult this process is. You're just going to be taking notes on the three stages and what happens in the three stages. We're not going to go into detail in each particular stage. So, let's run through the three steps briefly. Step number one, once again, the first step is glycolysis. And what you need to remember is one molecule of glucose is broken in half and produces two molecules of pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound. That's all that I want you to know for this particular step. And here's another, here's a diagram. So we've got glucose going in to glycolysis. And after that, we end up with two molecules of ATP are used to fuel this process. And our end result are two pyruvic acids. The second step to cellular respiration is the Krebs cycle. So the pyruvic acid that came from glycolysis is broken down into carbon dioxide and citric acid. So once again, the pyruvic acid goes into the Krebs cycle. and is broken down into carbon dioxide and citric acid. Now, looking at this particular picture, you can see that it is extremely complex. We're not going into detail in the Krebs cycle. All I want you to know are the basics. Pyruvic acid is broken down, and the byproducts are going to be carbon dioxide and citric acid. The third step or stage in cellular respiration is the electron transport chain. Sometimes abbreviated E T. C for short. What happens in the electron transport chain is high energy electrons are used to convert ADP into ATP. And there are your hydrogen ions that are part of this particular process and you also have the electrons used as energy to fuel this. Now looking at the picture once again you can see how complicated this particular process is. All I want you to remember is in the electron transport chain high energy electrons are converting ATP or ADP, I'm sorry, into ATP. That's all I need you to remember. Fermentation is another type of process, but here in fermentation, we don't use oxygen. So in the um, cellular respiration, oxygen is present because we need to take in oxygen in order for that process to work. In fermentation, we don't use any oxygen. So in fermentation, oxygen is not present, so we still have glycolysis, 
but then it is followed by a different pathway. And no, I am not expecting you to know that particular process in detail. What I want you to know is right here. Fermentation is the release of energy from food by producing ATP, and that was our end result in cellular respiration, but here it's in the absence of oxygen. So in cellular respiration, oxygen is present. In fermentation, oxygen is not present. Our end result, we're still getting ATP, but it's a different chemical reaction. There are two types of fermentation. There's alcoholic fermentation, and in alcoholic fermentation, ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide are the waste products. And um, a common process that you probably know is alcoholic fermentation causes bread dough to rise. So, how does this particular thing work? When yeast in the dough runs out of oxygen, it begins to ferment, giving off bubbles of carbon dioxide that form air spaces you see in your slice of bread. Because of the high temperature, the alcohol evaporates when the dough is baked. So this would be an example, a common example, of alcoholic fermentation. The other type of fermentation is lactic acid fermentation. And in lactic acid fermentation, this is produced in your muscles during rapid exercise when your body cannot supply enough oxygen to the tissues. So this causes your muscles to cramp up. So what's happening here is rapidly produced ATP by lactic acid fermentation causes painful burning sensation in your muscles. So when you get these muscle cramps, that's due to a process called lactic acid fermentation. Why is this happening? Right here. Your body cannot supply enough oxygen to its tissues and that causes you to cramp up. All right, now one of the important things that you need to remember is the difference between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And this chart kind of gives you a really quick comparison between the two. So you'll want to make sure that this is in your notes and that you remember this. Once again, the function of photosynthesis is to capture energy. The function of cellular respiration is to release energy. The location of photosynthesis is in the chloroplasts. The location of cellular respiration is the mitochondria. The reactants, or what goes into the chemical reaction, in photosynthesis, we take in, the plants take in carbon dioxide and water, and in cellular respiration, it is glucose and oxygen. The products are what comes out of the chemical reaction. In photosynthesis, you're ending up with glucose and oxygen. And in cellular respiration, you're ending up with carbon dioxide and water. One thing to remember is the energy flow in photosynthesis and cellular respiration takes place in opposite directions. The process of photosynthesis is the process that deposits or gives energy. Cellular respiration is the process that withdraws energy. So photosynthesis is capturing the energy Cellular respiration is giving the energy off so that we as animals 
are able to function. And that concludes cellular respiration.